Today I'm going to tie a uh, pattern that has been extremely effective uh, both in uh, British Columbia and the lakes up there as well as in and around the uh, still waters in the inland northwest. It's called the Black Selly. Uh, it's essentially a takeoff on the chromie pattern devised by a uh, noted fly tire and fly fisherman Phil Rowley. Uh, this fly appears in his book um, dealing with selective uh, or still water solutions rather and um, it was introduced to me by uh, my friend uh, Brian Chan from Kamloops. Brian is known as the uh, Karanamid King and after having fished with him several days um, it's a title he well deserves. Uh, Brian tells me this fly is used by one fisherman exclusively uh, all he does is vary the size to uh, match the corresponding uh, live insects. Uh, what I have is uh, in the vise a Tiemco size 10 2499BL. That's their barbless version. This 2499 is an extremely strong hook with a wide gap. Uh, you can see what hooking capacity it has there. Um, it's just an amazingly uh, open hook, uh, but very strong, does not bend, is heavy to hold uh, the fish that usually grow a little bit larger in our still waters than those we might encounter in someplace else. Uh, I've uh, slipped on a size 7 64ths tungsten white bead. Uh, you can tie this fly with a black bead and white antron or uh, uniflex gills, uh, but I think for me, it works best uh, with the white tungsten bead. So uh, we're going to start by using some um, 70 denier um, uni thread. Uh, you can use probably 140 on uh, flies uh, this size. Uh, I like this size for later on in the season, later on in the uh, chronomy season when the larger bugs are hatching, but um, you can also tie it down. The appropriate range, or the uh, usual range, I think, is somewhere between a size 10 and a size 14 on the 24.99. Uh, on the size 10, the size 12, you can probably get away with 140 denier. It, it takes less uh, thread to build up the underbody. Um, so the, the the body of the fly is black flashaboo. The rib is holographic red flashaboo. And uh, what we're going to do, and I always do this when I tie coronavids, is I attach the ribbing to the fly, winding it down to the bend, um, and then beginning to shape and form a body. I think that lends a uniform approach. On the smaller flies, it also helps to um, make for a thinner body. So we'll just attach the ribbing there wind it down. You can, if you want, just use the straight shank of the hook. I like to come down over the bend, uh, down to about where the um, barb would be if this were a barbed hook. Uh, I then attach two strands of black flashaboo. Um, the easiest way to do that, you can see here, is to take two strands around the thread kind of try to even them up there because you're going to wrap them to form the body and of course it never works quite that well when you want to demonstrate it, but <laughs> uh, we'll we'll get that done here in uh, just a second so anyway we wrap uh, two strands around the thread wind that up and you want to make sure you take a wrap around that bend because otherwise the, the flashaboo won't wrap very well for you. I'll uh, attach that flashaboo to a material clip and wind forward to behind the bead. Now, one of the things that's really helpful, I think, is if you understand uh, by counterclockwise twisting the, the bobbin, the, the thread will lie flatter and form a, a shapelier, smoother body. 
uh, to counterclockwise, if you look down on the hook from up above, look down on the hook, spin the bobbin counterclockwise. You can even watch the, the thread itself uh, unwind and flatten. And when it has, then you simply take your thread winds. And since this is a larger hook and, and uh, takes more of an underbody, I'll wind all the way back to where uh, the bend, or where the uh, body ends. Retwisting again counterclockwise to smooth the thread out, taking it forward to the back of the eye, or the back of the bead. Now at this point, you can really begin to shape the body. Again, we'll flatten out the thread. And this time we're going to wind down approximately two thirds of the body length. And we'll start right back up at that point. We'll come again with another twist. You can also use um, uh, uh, uni stretch in, in black uh, to build up a, a body faster and quicker. I just find that it uh, doesn't work all that well for me. It creates sometimes a lumpy body. We'll wind back down two thirds of the last two thirds and coming back up to behind the bead. We'll once again counterclockwise twist that thread to, to uh, flatten it out. And we'll go down two thirds of the last two thirds. And you can see the the uh, shape of the fly is now uh, appropriately being built up. We'll create a little bit more there right behind the bead where we'll eventually tie everything off. Now at this point, uh, it's really helpful to take your, only the black at this point, not the black and the red, take your black, uh, moisten it with your fingertips because it likes to slide around and then form that body in close touching turns Finding a nice, flat, black, shiny body that the trout seem to love. Winding that up to right behind the bead. Tying it off. With a couple of turns. I use a rotary vise to make my cuts nice and sharp. Close. Get rid of the trash. Bring that back around. And we're going to take a turn or two behind the tail to form a little bit of a butt. Then I'm going to try to make six or seven e e evenly spaced turns. There's two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Tie that off there at the head. Make a couple of clips. Take our whip finisher. And if you need to build a, a little bit more of a taper, now's a good time to do that. And come in there, turn that off. These flies, because they're made of this shiny material, are pretty fragile. Uh, you need at least uh, one coat of UV resin. I happen to be using and like uh, Solares or Solares, depending on how you want to pronounce that. Uh, you can see it makes for an extremely shiny body. It also makes it pretty durable on its own. Uh, but what I have come to do lately is after I treat the body with this UV resin, and with the UV lamp that kind of secures it and makes it even tighter. And they say usually about 15 seconds will do it. I think it takes a little bit longer than that. I like to use the rotary feature of my vise to uh, slowly turn the, the hook around while I apply the UV light. And 
you got a little bit of time and you want to fly the last, so it may take a little bit longer, but I, I like the way it looks. Um, at this point, uh, your fly is complete. You can add it to your box. Uh, if you'd like, though, and, and one of the things I have been doing is I, I like to come in now um, with a coating of super glue. Uh, I also find that uh, the best super glue for my purposes is uh, this Gorilla Glue. Uh, it has a brush, makes it easy to apply the, the coating. I like to let it dry a little bit longer before that, but I hope you enjoyed today's fly and that you'll check in again. Thank you.